Hey, 42 here. A quick warning before we begin. This is a boring video. No, seriously, it's all about boring. But before we look downwards, let's take a detour up towards space. Sputnik 1 was the first artificial satellite to ever successfully make it into orbit. And its launch by the Soviets in 1957 was one of the most significant achievements in the early space race. On the one hand, the space race was about Cold War rivals, the US and the Soviet Union, engaging in a bit of good old showing off in front of the rest of the world. A classic case of my rocket's bigger than your rocket. But it was also seen as vital to national security, with Sputnik's launch causing the big wigs in Washington to start panicking that they'd fallen behind the Soviets in technological prowess. But we all know how the story went from there. Just over 10 years later, in 1969, the US came out on top when the Apollo 11 crew made the 240,000 mile journey to our nearest neighbour and Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the moon. Oh yeah, and he botched arguably the most famous line in all of human history in the process. It's one step for a man, Neil. Ah well, maybe next time. The space race captured the attention of the world, with some 600 million people watching the landing live on television. But whilst 20% of mankind had their attention trained on the heavens, there was another kind of race taking place, this one heading in exactly the opposite direction. Because whilst the US and the USSR weren't busy strapping their citizens to rockets and blasting them into space, getting involved in proxy wars or testing ever more cataclysmic nuclear weapons, they were, of all things, preoccupied with attempting to find out who could dig the deepest hole. Now, that might sound like more the kind of behaviour befitting two bored kids on the beach, rather than two of the world's biggest superpowers, but I can assure you, it's true. The ultimate aim, apart from yet another round of metaphorical dick measuring, was to become the first nation in history to drill down through the Earth's top layer, the crust, and into the mantle below. This race to the centre of the Earth is much less famous than the space race. Astronauts, cosmonauts, and the endless reaches of space are just that much cooler than very deep holes and a bunch of rocks, I guess. And Bruce Willis wouldn't come along to make drilling sexy again until 1998 when Armageddon was released. But in many ways, the quest to reach the Earth's mantle was more of a journey into the unknown than the one taken by Neil and the gang on Apollo 11. Because believe it or not, whilst humanity was busy pushing back the boundaries of space and developing ever more advanced technology, we still were surprisingly ignorant as to what was going on down here on Earth, right beneath our feet. It wouldn't be until almost 10 years after Sputnik 1 made it into orbit that the theory of plate tectonics would finally be agreed upon, for example. This unifying theory was absolutely vital to our understanding of the geological processes that shaped the Earth. Without it, scientists were divided as to what exactly caused earthquakes and volcanoes, and though they recognised how the coastlines of South America and Africa were a suspiciously snug fit, nobody was quite sure what mechanism could have split them apart. And while scientists had come up with some ingenious ways to better understand the composition of the Earth, despite only ever having scratched its surface, they were fully aware that without hard evidence, their theories were just that. Theories. The US and USSR took two very different approaches to the challenge of drilling down into the mantle. The Soviets found a nice barren stretch of land on the Kola Peninsula to start digging, whilst the Americans decided to take a crafty shortcut by drilling offshore where the Earth's crust is significantly thinner, around 5 to 6 kilometers deep versus 30 to 40 beneath the continents. The US quest to reach the mantle was named Project Mohol after Croatian seismologist Andrija Mohorodjevic, who discovered the boundary between the crust and the mantle in 1909 through clever observation of seismic waves. The project began in 1960 off Guadalupe, Mexico, amid swirling rumours of a similar project being undertaken by the Soviets. Remember, this was just three years after the USSR had gotten one over on their arch rivals with the launch of Sputnik 1, and the Americans were nervous of being second best once again. 
Project Mohol was led by the curiously named Miscellaneous Society, an eccentric bunch of rather brilliant scientists known for awarding their members a genuine stuffed albatross as an award for significant achievements. Their motto was Illegitimi non carborundum, a mock Latin aphorism which roughly translates as Don't let the bastards grind you down. Yes, it was these guys the Americans chose to go up against the might of the USSR. Picture Rocky Balboa versus Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, only replace Rocky with a quaint old professor wearing a monocle and carrying a stuffed albatross under one arm. Spoiler alert, Professor Balboa is going to get seven shades of shit kicked out of him in this one, kids. At least he could use his albatross to block punches, instead of his face. Although the Americans had cleverly sidestepped the need to drill through the first 25 kilometers or so of crust by starting on the ocean floor, they did have one problem. Deep water ocean drilling hadn't been invented yet. And unsurprisingly, drilling a very deep hole in the ocean floor whilst bobbing around in a constantly moving ship isn't exactly a walk in the park. But if there's one thing oddball academics are good at, it's overcoming complex technical challenges. Thanks to their invention of dynamic positioning, a computer-controlled system that automatically maintains a ship's position using a series of interconnected thrusters, the project got off to a great start. Led by the multi-talented Willard Bascom, who was an engineer, adventurer, scientist, writer, photographer, painter, miner, cinematographer, and archaeologist, Phase 1 testing resulted in the first successful, untethered deep water drilling ever completed. Give that man an albatross. Maybe just a small one though. Because of the five holes drilled, the deepest was only 183 meters. But the important thing was they'd proven it was possible. Oh, and I forgot to mention, to make this strange project that little bit stranger, legendary author John Steinbeck just happened to be along for the ride taking some time off between writing The Winter of Our Discontent and winning himself a Nobel Prize for Literature. John, an amateur oceanographer in his spare time, was on board reporting on the project for a special feature in Life magazine. Despite its early success, things soon took a turn for the worse for Project Mohol. You'd have thought that someone might have picked up on this a little sooner, but it turns out drilling down to the mantle is a pricey business. And funding was cut not long after the completion of Phase 1, when the guys holding the purse strings heard just how much Phase 2 was going to cost. This came along with the usual helping of political scheming, academic infighting and general bickering suffered by all great projects, meaning Phase 2 never got off the ground, or for that matter, under it. Yes, Project Mohol eventually went the way of Lenny in Of Mice and Men, and was sadly terminated. Its profile having been raised by Steinbeck's popular report, Project Mohol became something of a national joke in the following months, with Newsweek magazine dubbing the failed expedition Project No Hole. Very good. The Russians, meanwhile, took a little while longer to get their act together. Despite those rumours over in the US around the time Mohol was being set up, it wasn't until 1970 that the Soviet project actually got going. It was worth the wait. The Soviet borehole was just 9 inches thick. But don't believe the rumours. Girth isn't everything. Because those Soviets, they went deep. Real deep. Just how deep, I hear you ask? Put it this way. If I was to ask you what the deepest point on Earth is, there's a decent chance you'd say the Mariana Trench the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. If you're a real smart arse, you might even go with the Challenger Deep, the very deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is a dizzying 10,900 meters down. But as I'm sure you've guessed by now, you'd be wrong on both counts. Because the deepest known place on Earth to this day lies at the bottom of a hole dug by the Russians in order to get one over on the Americans during the Cold War. Known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole, presumably named by an imaginationally challenged Soviet due to its location on the Kola Peninsula and the fact that it is, like, super deep, man, this particular hole goes down a frankly ridiculous 12.2 kilometers. To make a feeble attempt at putting that number into some kind of context, the Kola Superdeep Borehole 
is deeper than Mount Everest is tall. It's deeper even than the cruising altitude of a Boeing 747. And if you were to somehow fall into it, for which you would need to have one hell of a narrow waistline, it would take you around four full minutes of free fall before you hit the bottom very, very hard. As an interesting aside, in his book, Do Colors Exist?, mathematician Seth Stannard Cottrell calculated how long it would take to fall all the way through the Earth, if such a thing were possible, through a very long tube in a vacuum. His conclusion? 42 minutes. Despite the incredible depth the Soviets reached, they didn't get anywhere near the mantle as intended, making it only about 30% of the way through. At a certain depth, the temperatures had begun to increase much more sharply than had been predicted, up to about 180 degrees at the bottom of the borehole. It was too much for their equipment to handle, and they were forced to call it a day. Drilling ceased in 1990, and the site was abandoned entirely. But many of the buildings, now derelict, can still be found there today. And the super deep borehole itself? It's just sitting there. It's covered by a fairly hefty looking metal lid, admittedly, but below that lid is a 12 km drop all the way down. Adventure tourists are known to visit the site regularly. Now, maybe it's just me, but there's something kind of creepy about a hole this deep. And perhaps that's why rumors have circulated over the years that the Soviet scientists, like a bunch of irresponsible dwarves from Middle Earth, delved too greedily and too deep. But instead of pissing off a balrog, these scientists are said to have unexpectedly broken through into a colossal cavern. Curious, they then lowered a heat-resistant microphone inside to see just what was going on down there. When they came to play back the tape on the surface, they heard the screams of the damned. That's right, instead of finding the mantle, the Soviets are said to have drilled straight down through the ceiling of hell. I bet Satan was pissed when he found out. It's notoriously difficult to find a good roofer 12.12 kilometers below the surface of the Earth. Okay, so this conspiracy theory is obviously utter bullshit, but that didn't stop several news outlets from reporting the story at the time. Seriously. Trinity Broadcasting Network, the largest Christian television network in the world, actually ran the story in 1989, titling it, Scientists Discover Hell. What the scientists did discover wasn't quite as exciting as the fiery inferno of the underworld, but was still quite important scientifically. They found liquid water much further down than had previously been thought possible, as well as microscopic plankton fossils 6.8 kilometers below the surface. But of course, the most important discovery was that, yes, the Soviets could indeed dig a deeper hole than the Americans, and therefore, most likely, did have larger penises. So whilst the US may have won the space race, it was the Soviets who got furthest in the race to the center of the Earth. Though neither side ever did manage to cross the finish line. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, because it really helps me to continue to make them. Also, you can get your hands on a first edition signed copy of my new book, Stick a Flag in It, by heading on over to Unbound Publishing, you'll find a link in the description, and pre-ordering your copy today. Thank you.